Welcome to Issues That Matter. I'm Cynthia Poole and my guest today is Scott Ritter. And Scott and I are going to talk about the Brittany Griner case. So, Scott, she was uh, sentenced to nine years in jail. That's, that, it, I, it's kind of stiff, but I have my, I have my uh, thoughts about that. What do you think? Well, I mean, it, it, from a, an American perspective, um, when we compare and contrast the penalties that uh, would be accrued for something like that, I mean, the, frankly speaking, um, I don't think uh, Brittany would have been um, charged here in the United States uh, at a minimum. Uh, I mean, she had a she had a prescription, even if she was in a state uh, uh, that that prohibited this uh, or under federal law, uh, it, it, the amount was so small. The intent was clearly uh, not um, to <laughs> distribute. Um, and I just think that, um, you know, law, law enforcement, if they did anything, would have been to seize the material, maybe issue her a, a fine or something. I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm not familiar with the, with the drug laws. So from, from that perspective, uh, I think most Americans look at this and say, wow, this is, um, this is stiff. This is unreasonable. Uh, from the Russian perspective, they have zero tolerance. Um, now, I, having said that, um, Brittany's defense team maintains that had she been a Russian citizen, uh, she would have been let off with a warning or a misdemeanor and a fine. Um, but she's not a Russian citizen. She was coming in. Um, and, um, you know, we, we, we live in uh, difficult times. Uh, it's a difficult time to be an American traveling to Russia with um, uh, narcotics on your possession. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we and, and we can say what we want about, you know, Russian law. It's Russian law. They get to make decisions, et cetera. You know, uh, Nancy Pelosi, um, our esteemed um, mm -hmm. uh, Speaker of the House, um, traveled to Singapore uh, earlier this week. Uh, had Brittany uh, been arrested in Singapore for the same offense, mm -hmm. um, the minimum she would have faced is five years in prison and five lashes. She would have been strapped to a board and lashed mm -hmm. with, a, with a cane. Um, that's the minimum. The maximum would have been 20 years for that. For that, if she had brought more, uh, she could be executed. So before people start saying, "Oh, this is Russia being political," our close friend and ally, Singapore, has even more draconian um, anti-drug laws. And we can go down in the world and find other nations that have similarly um, harsh approaches to to this. So, I, I. I I am not going to rule out the possibility that there was some political element here, but I will say that, um, you know, strictly speaking, she uh, was was operating in violation of Russian law. Uh, Russian law is not um, is not flexible. There's no plea plea system. You you can't plea down uh, into a, to a lesser sentence. Um, she pled guilty. Let's never forget that she pled guilty, oh. and so she was given a sentence. Uh, under the law, um, uh, you know, if I were her teammates, if I were her fans, if I were her family, I'd be extremely upset about this. Um, extremely upset about this. But you know, as, as somebody who, who steps back and uh, you know, it is what it is. You you know, you're you're an adult. You're traveling. Um, you, you know, I'm I'm in a rush. Therefore, I overlooked narcotics in my bag. No. Um, it, it, it's not a, it's not a, not an excuse. And, um, you know, would this, the question we have to ask is, would this sentence have been, uh, given to Brittany, um, you know, at a time when relations were good between the United States and Russia? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I would say that there's a, a better than 50% chance that it would have been given because it's the law. Uh, the Russians didn't make up a law. They didn't, uh, create new sentencing guidelines. She was uh, tried in accordance with the law. She pled guilty in accordance with the law and she was sentenced in accordance with the law. I find that there's two issues that have not been addressed and I think both of them are very important. Number one, in the United States, there's many, many black and brown people who have gotten severe sentences for basically the same thing. 
That's number one. Number two, the women's groups have not mentioned anything about the fact that male athletes get paid a heck of a lot more, and that's why she was in Russia to supplement her income. No, I've heard this. Um, I've heard the second argument um, made by her teammates, by her coach, um, and 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 others. But beyond um, beyond the you know the the her immediate basketball family, you're right. I, I haven't seen um, you know uh, female rights group, women's rights groups um, out speaking about that because you, you you're absolutely right to bring up this point. She was in Russia because she was playing for a Russian basketball team as a means of supplementing her income. You know, here's a, you know, a, a, a woman who's won, um, you know, gold medals on behalf of the United States at the Olympics. She's one of the premier uh, female basketball um, stars uh, in America, if not the world. And yet she has to supplement her income um, by, you know, traveling to Russia and playing in a, uh, in a European league. Um, now <laughs> let's, let's, let's be real. Um, there's plenty of uh, NBA uh, basketball players who do the same, uh, do 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 similar things. I mean, the the European leagues are full of American basketball players, um, including lesser known NBA stars. But Griner is a um, is a huge star. She's the biggest star in the in the women's league, and the fact that she has to do this, I think, is you know proof positive of um, you know the 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 lack of equity between the um, you know, men's leagues and the women's league. Now, people come out and and, and say um, that's because the men generate more income, more you know uh, the the men bring in more revenue, uh, so they should be paid higher, and and that's a fair argument too. Except you know, I mean, I'll, I'll I'm getting way beyond my depth here. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm pointing out both both sides of the story, and I'm not I'm not trying to weigh in on either. Uh, you know, but so there's that, and then you bring up what I think is a more important issue which is the issue of uh, the inequity of uh, American of the American justice system when it comes to um, uh, black and Latino and brown um, males, um, you know, <laughs> females, probably well, females are, are, are historically given a little bit more latitude. It's primarily young black men okay. who go to jail for um, for drug charges of this nature, you know, and then they've done things. Uh, I mean, you know, in New York, fortunately, we've uh, We've repealed it, but you know we used to have the old Rockefeller laws, which right. were specifically passed to uh, incarcerate young black men for marijuana drug charges. Um, many states have passed uh, the three strikes law, uh, so that uh, you know if you get you know three um, three convictions, uh, you're in jail for life with no chance of parole. Right. Uh, and so you know some guys will go out and uh, smoke a joint, get caught, it becomes a life sentence. Mm -hmm. So. For all the people screaming about, you know, the the horrible nature of the Russian uh, legal system, yeah, feel free to criticize. That's you have you have every right to do that, but um, don't be hypocrites. Take a look at our own too. If you're going to point an accusatory finger at Russia because of uh, the the Brittany Grimes um, uh, conviction, then you you really need to be coming to the United States and taking a look at the totality of our prison system. Uh, we incarcerate more people uh, than any other free nation in the world, uh, more people than uh, most uh, totalitarian states. Um, and the overwhelming uh, percentage of the people we incarcerate are um, young black American men. Uh, and many of the times they're, they're, put to, they're, they're sent to jail for crimes that if you were white would have been dismissed or given a lesser sentence. What I find interesting is, you know, I, I was watching TV just when the, uh, you know, a sentence came down and it's basically what they talked about is, you know, the, the sentence imposed by Russia, but they, of course, they never say anything about the sentences compo uh, that are given to minorities in, you know, in the United States. and. You know, I, I'm sure that they don't want to pinpoint our failures, but at the same time, I think they should be a little more honest. Yeah, I think, I mean, one of the interesting things is that uh, Brittany got the very competent legal representation in Russia. Uh, she she had very good Russian lawyers who um, 
you know, in a, in a very high profile case, gave her, um, you know, a, a they, they represented her well. I mean, look, Russia has a 99.99% conviction rate. So you could have had uh, the, the, the dream team and still gotten convicted. I mean, she, I mean, they're, they're, like I said, there's no police system in Russia. Um, you know, you compare and contrast that again, I, America, it's not that hard. Uh, the people who live in Albany go down to the public defender's office and take a look at the chaos that reigns there. Take a look at the caseload given to the average public defender. Take a look at how they treat their clients. Um, you know, how little time they get to actually prepare a case. Uh, look at the decisions they have to make where they are going to send some people down, uh, you know, send them upstate um, knowing, knowingly, meaning incarceration, because they don't have the time or resources to give them an adequate defense and they, that a decision was made that on this case, there might be a better chance. So we're going to put more time, more effort, more, uh, more resources into to this case. But that means we have to let these uh, three people basically uh, get, look at the police system, one of the most corrupt systems in the world. Take a look at how overworked, overworked, um, you know, the public defenders um, will compel innocent people to take a plea because uh, the system doesn't care if you're innocent. The system is designed to put you away. Anyways, look at the overcharging of, you know, Brittany had some very simplistic charges. You know, uh, you give that to an American prosecutor, they'd had 15 pages of charges, charging her with every felony imaginable, uh, RICO, uh, conspiracy, um, you know, everything, knowing that the vast majorities aren't going to you know, fly, but intimidate the defense team into saying, oh, my God, you're going to now be facing 40 life sentences. Um, you need to plead guilty to X. Um, you know, and that's the way it works. So innocent people plead guilty. Um, innocent people who plead uh, guilty all the time. Uh, our prisons are full of innocent people. Brittany Griner is not innocent. She might not have been, had criminal intent, but she's guilty of that which she was charged. She admits it. She says, I had them there. These are mine. Um, they shouldn't have been here. I, I packed in a rushed manner. Um, you know, and all the other stuff is just explaining away the fact that she broke Russian law. There are people in prison today in America who did not break any law. Their only crime is being a young black man in a judicial system that is designed to put young black men in prison for a long time. Um, so really stop crying for Brittany. You know, she's going to, she's going to get exchanged. It may take six months. It may take a year. Um, and yeah, her career will suffer and she will suffer, but she's going to get out. There's black kids right now that aren't getting out. And you know what? They're also going to the University of Hard Knocks. Um, you really think putting a young black uh, male in, uh, in, in state prison is doing society a favor? You're taking a kid who probably made a mistake and could have been rehabilitated, could have been put on the right path if you given a helping hand, not sent to prison, and you're sending him to get a PhD in how to commit crime. Yeah. To survive, he's going to have to join a gang. That gang is going to educate him, on not only on prison survival techniques, but they're going to educate him on what he's going to do in the street afterwards, because that's the only thing he's going to be able to do. He's not going to be able to get a job. He now has a felony conviction. Uh, so he can't work. Um, you know, he has no, no future, and he will have to go back to the skill sets that society denied him. Uh, society didn't give him training. Instead, society sent him in. So now the Crips, the Bloods, the Latin Kings, whomever, are going to teach him how to push heroin on the street. And he's going to get out. He's going to do that. And he's going to get caught again. Um, maybe he's going to kill somebody. Now he's going to jail for a long time, if not the rest of his life. And again, you think that this, this hard time is going to fix him. When he gets out, you think he's going to walk the straight and narrow? No. We have the highest recidivism rates imaginable in the United States because our system is designed to punish young black men. Um, end of story. So quit shedding tears for Brittany Griner. If you really give a damn about justice, why don't you just take a closer look at what's going on around you at home? You know, uh, you were saying that you think that her career is going to be somehow diminished if she is traded. My feeling is if she is traded, 
She's going to come back here. She's going to get a huge corporate sponsorship. She's going to go around the country. And she's going to be living like a princess. Oh, there's no doubt that Brittany will get a book deal, a movie deal, and she'll make money. I'll talk about her basketball career. She's a, she's an athlete um, yeah. that operates at, you know, at the highest levels imaginable in her sport. Um, the reason why she had the, um, the, the um, cannabis um, cartridges was for uh, pain management in the off season. This is a, this is a woman who has injuries. She's hurting. Um, and at, at her level, these injuries have to be treated uh, regular. She has to have specific workout regime. Her body is deteriorating as a, you know, in terms of its her ability to play um, professional basketball at the level that she's used to. So, you know, depending on how long she's incarcerated, it's going to be very difficult for her to recover from this. Um, you know, who knows what's going on with, with the injuries that she, that she had? Are they getting proper treatment? I'm sure she's getting proper treatment in terms of her ability to function normally on a day-to-day basis, but she is a professional athlete. That means that she should actually be going through specialized rehabilitation and then specialized physical training to make sure her body is capable of performing to the level that is, is required of, of, of her sport. This is what I mean. I, I think, you know, she's not a young chicken anymore. She's been around the block a couple of times. She's of the age right now where her body, um, you know, is susceptible to injury. And if it's not properly taken care of, starts to deteriorate in terms of its, uh, functionality as a professional athlete so this could be fatal to her career depending on how long she's out uh, her body may never recover that doesn't mean that she won't have a different career that doesn't mean that she won't become um you know the a, a symbol of um you know you know a survivor um you know she's a, the new hero believe me there's going to be a book Brittany Griner is going to make a lot of money off a book deal She's going to come back. She's going to be given a book deal. And this book is going to sell very well. And she will make an awful lot of money, maybe more money than she made as a basketball player. Then there will be movie deals. and She'll have a movie made for her and she'll become, a, she's already a household name. So, you know, she may become, you know, she might get the kind of endorsements that she hasn't gotten prior to this. But I don't think the issue is about money. Brittany Griner plays basketball. She loves playing basketball. Basketball is her life. I mean, this is this is what she does. And I and on here I have extreme sympathy for her because she's at a very, I believe, at a, at a very pivotal moment in her career where, you know, her body needs to be maintained properly and it's not going to be maintained properly in prison. Um, and so I, I do think that her career will suffer because of this. If she was caught with in the United States uh, with what she was caught with in Russia, what would be the ramifications in this country for the the oil and the vaping? Well, first of all, depending where she was cut, it, it may not be a violation of law. Uh, second of all, the amounts that we're talking about are so small uh, that it, you know she could she could not be charged with anything other than that which is affiliated with personal use. And uh, so, at worst, that would be a misdemeanor. Second of all, she's Brittany Griner. She has money. She'd get lawyers. And um, the public outcry, I mean, this is a girl who has a, a woman who has a, a prescription. Uh, this is a woman who tested clean, by the way. It's not like she's using irresponsibly. She only uses in the off season under a doctor's um, you know, uh, supervision. When she was traveling to Russia, it's clear that she wasn't using these drugs because the, the Russians, of course, tested her and she was clean uh, because she's a basketball player. And she understands her, uh, the, the, the requirement not to be under what could be called performance enhancing drugs. So, you know, intent is lacking. So in the United States system, um, there's, there's no way this would have been an issue um, at all. I don't believe, I mean, I, I don't even know if the amount that she had was, was large enough for a dog to find it, but even if a dog found it, I think the worst thing that would happen is that the, the cops would have uh, taken a look at it, maybe given her an appearance ticket. She would have hired a lawyer. The lawyer would have gone in. It would have been resolved. She never would have to show up. And and um, that's that. This isn't, strictly speaking, from the American perspective. Remember, we have a different approach to drugs than Russia. Does. Russia has an absolute zero tolerance policy on drugs. Zero tolerance. Uh, in the United States, you know, we right now are, um, you know, many states are passing laws which are legalizing uh, cannabis legalizing um, 
you know, the, 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 the kind of uh, derivative products that Brittany was using. Um, the, uh, there's pressure on the federal government to remove marijuana from the, you know, the, 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 the federal list of, uh, of, of narcotics. So, you know, we, we have a much more tolerant position. It's also drugs are far more prevalent in the United States. So we've, we've adjusted our legal system to, um, you know, to differentiate between people who uh, possess for, you know, possess drugs for the intent to distribute and people who possess to use for their personal use. And so we have, you know, sort of a, a, a tiered, um, you know, charging and sentencing aspect to this. Uh, the Russians don't. Russians, it's a one size fits all. Uh, drugs are illegal. You get caught, you pay the price. Now, she's been there several times, right? Correct. Okay, so each time she's went there, did she have these drugs on her at that point? Did, did, what would you think? I think, look, I'm going to take Brittany at face value. I think she's telling the truth. I think she's telling 100% the truth. I think Brittany knows what Russian law is. I think she knows that she can't have these uh, drugs on her possession. I think she was packing in a rushed fashion. And I think that, um, you know, she failed to do a thorough scrub. You know, she's not an intelligence officer. So when she travels, she doesn't lay everything out to make sure that all identifying material is taken off and pack right. her stuff carefully and go through the bag to make sure there's nothing there, clean everything perfectly, pack it perfectly. You know, people that are in that business do that. Um, she's not. She's a basketball player. So she was probably, you know, as all human beings are, a little behind schedule, trying to make a flight, throwing the bag open, throwing clothes in the bag, shutting the bag and going. Um, and she arrived in Russia and she had the bad luck of having, um, you know, Russian customs officials who um, were doing their job properly. And they went through and they found it. And that's that. So do you think that that she really needed to go to Russia and violate a law to supplement her income? Well, I don't think she needed to go to Russia and violate a law. I don't think she intended to violate a law. Like I say, I, I believe her. I believe every word she says, that she had no intent to do this, which is purely inadvertent, et cetera. Did she need to go to Russia? Look, Russian leagues pay well. <laughs> they pay well. Okay. So, um, you know, and now, I don't know what she makes as a as a WNBA basketball player. I would bet she makes a whole bunch more money than I do. Mm -hmm. um, or me. Or you or the average American. But we're also not operating in the same lifestyle. I mean, I, I think her 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 lifestyle is a is a more expensive lifestyle. Um, I think in order to sustain that lifestyle, uh, she needs income. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so she, um, you know, she made the decision. I mean, some women go play in the Italian league. Some women go play in the French league. Some women go play in the Serbian leagues. Uh, she played in the Russian league. The Russian leagues pay pretty good in terms of these, these leagues. So it was a, a nice chunk of supplemental income uh, for her. Um, you know, I'm not going to pick on Brittany's lifestyle choices. Uh, you know, she's a professional athlete at the highest level. Um, you know, society puts certain pressures on people who operate at that level, uh, you know, to attend certain functions, to be seen doing certain things. Um, you know, not everybody has the luxury to be a Paul Newman type character and just withdraw and live a totally normal life. Um, you know, the people who are superstars in America um, have, have expectations placed on them. And those expectations oftentimes come with a price tag. And so there's pressure to be making the money to live in the lifestyle that um, you've grown accustomed to and society expects of you. So I don't condemn her for doing this. She, she made a decision. It's, a, it's not an illegitimate decision. Um, the, the, the tragedy, and this is a tragedy, the tragedy is she inadvertently packed um, you know, two, two uh, cartridges with uh, less than one gram of, um, I, they're calling it hashish oil. I think it's cannabis oil. I don't know. Um, you know, but it's an illegal, it's an illegal substance in Russia. And, you know, she's, and, it, and again, she got caught up in a time when relations aren't that good. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I, you know, if I were her business manager, even let's throw the drugs out the window, 
I would have said, I really don't think you should be going to Russia at this point. Right. Because, um, you know, it, it's, it's tough, you know, because I don't know how she's getting paid. Um, you know, does she get paid in rubles? Does she get paid in dollars? How does she get that money out of Russia? You know, they've shut down the banking systems. They've, uh, they, now I think she traveled before the war started. So it was before the sanctions went in. But again, any, anybody who's following the, you know, the, the relations between Russia and the United States and the statements made about economic sanctions would have known that, um, you know, bad things are about to happen uh, and that you can anticipate that, um, you know, there's going to be restrictions placed on banking, et cetera. And if I were a business manager, I said, look, uh, you know, you let's say you're making, I'm, I'm making this number up. I don't know. But let's say you're making $400,000 playing for the Russians. Mm -hmm. um, I think you should actually take the 280,000 deal with the Italians right now, because uh, Italy is a much it's a safer place to travel. It's a, it's a more predictable place. Uh, we don't have to worry about sanctions. Russia, there's too many unknowns. But again, I don't know what, 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 what conversation she had with her business manager. And at the end of the day, she did nothing wrong. There was nothing illegal about her traveling to Russia. It was a very normal thing to do. Lots of American basketball players do it. Um, so I can't be critical of Brittany Griner. I'm not going to be critical of Brittany Griner. I'm not going to say that she was stupid. I'm not going to say she was criminal. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to say that she got caught up in a horrible situation. Um, and, um, you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, would I have preferred that the Russians give her a slap on the wrist and send her home? Yes. Um, but, you know, I think at the end of the day, Brittany's team, when this is all said and done, need to take a look at her teammates and look at everybody who made this such a hot button item here in America. Mm -hmm. The Russians have been saying all along, um, we, we're more than happy to talk about a deal, but we need you to shut up. Whatever we're going to talk about is going to take place behind a closed door back here, and no one's going to know about it. But the United States can't operate that way. We have everybody getting involved, jumping in. And all you do at that point in time is, one, irritate the Russians, which is probably not the thing to be doing right now when you're trying to get Brittany to come home. And then two, you're making the price higher. You're making Brittany more valuable than she may actually be. I mean, they could have, you know, maybe they could have traded Brittany for, you know, a run of the mill Russian. But now, thanks to the overreaction of the United States, the publicity that's been given, the intervention by the president, the secretary of state and others, her price tag has gone up. And it's going to cost the United States something serious to, to get her out. And that means that, the negotiations are going to be more complicated and more lengthy. Um, so, yay, congratulations, Brittany's teammates and all those people who think they're doing Brittany a favor by speaking out and making this an issue. You may have condemned this poor girl to spending more than a year, more than two years in prison because prisoner swaps don't happen overnight. Um, and if the Russians are asking for a significant trade, um, this may involve, for instance, uh, the United States putting pressure on Germany to release a prisoner that the Russians are very interested in. Um, and that, that will be a lengthy um, you know, negotiation if it happens. And what happens when a lengthy negotiation at, at takes, let's say, eight months fails, collapses at the end? That's a wasted eight months. So my advice to anybody who cares about Brittany, shut up. Do you think ultimately... And I think it would be really good for the United States to start a dialogue on the disparities between uh, the, the pay scale of male athletes versus the pay scale of women athletes. I, I think that's always a good dialogue to have. I mean, I know that that's happening right now uh, in, in um, I think it's college basketball or they're, they're talking about um, – the referees, they're talking about um, the um, disparity in pay between male referees and female referees and trying to bring uh, the pay scales equal because they're doing the exact same job. This isn't a case of, say, you're a female basketball player um, and, a, and a, you know, and you're trying to demand the same salary as, uh, you know, a, a w, or an NBA star. Um you know, I, I just don't think that the WNBA generates the kind of uh, revenue draw 
that the uh, that the men do. And then, uh, you know, again, I'm not I'm not a civil rights um, lawyer, and I I cannot speak um, in an educated fashion about the laws and the precedent and all that attached to it. I just think that if we're talking equity, um, you know, let's take gender out of it and just say that the men, you know, that 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 you know, business X generates four billion dollars. Therefore, they can afford to pay their employees more money than business Y, which generates four million dollars. And therefore, the pay scales will reflect that. Um, you know, I, I, you know, there's. I think there's some legitimacy to that argument. But again, you know, I'm a guy. <laughs> One of the interesting things about asking a white guy about um, racism or uh, gender inequality is, um, you know, I've never experienced it. So, um, you know, I, I I can't sit here and say, well, you know, oh, I, I have empathy. I can have sympathy, but I don't have empathy. I've never experienced it. I right. don't know what it's like to be a woman. I don't know what it's like to be a black man. I don't know like what it's like to be a black woman. So I can't sit here and say, you know, that, you know, I can't sit here and articulate uh, the kind of arguments that they could. Uh, and, it, you know, and, and that's just, uh, you know, that's just the reality of my situation. I do my best to keep an open mind, but, um, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of being what I am, a white guy. Um, <laughs> So, um, you know, I'm sure this uh, this will be an ongoing, you know, saga in the news, and hopefully we could have another talk about Brittany Greer. So, I, Griner, I'm sorry. So, um, this this you've been listening to Scott Ritter. I'm Cynthia Pooler. This is Issues That Matter. And if you like this show, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Scott.